Hi everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day today. In today's video, I will share with you a tour um, from my notebooks. It's like a old projects notebooks tour. So I will be sharing with you everything about all these notebooks that I used with my first business with Lisa Girl. So this, the idea of this video is that you can see the concept, the concepts I developed during my first business as I used every single notebook from this one when I started a blog in Spanish and then, and then with the other ones where I started creating my first digital products and my first courses. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get to that. So this is the first um, notebook, small notebook I started using. So it's from a bank, it's like a gift my dad gave me. And as you can see in the pages, this was the beginning <laughs> of my, my business. So I started using this um, notebook when I started learning about marketing. I started taking a course about marketing and as you can see, I started learning about different things like um, spending money on business and using PayPal and focusing my niche. I also started learning about the different types of the digital products that you could create and I also started learning about launching plans so I didn't have anything ready I was planning on creating products I was planning on creating a website but I didn't have anything ready I did have a kind of website which was called inayat.com and this website was about different topics it was about minimalism and I talked about my favorite Netflix shows, my favorite quotes. At this time, I was working in an office job and a nine to five job, and it was a replacement, so I wasn't hired there forever, but it was like something I went to work sometimes in the month, sometimes in the year, but I took advantage of every time I could be there in the office. I had this little notebook beside me, making me company, and whenever there was some dead time and I had nothing else to do, I would go to Google and start searching for different kind of information. And there it was where I found everything about Pinterest. So I started researching and I found Melissa Griffin course, the long tail keywords, Google predictive text and different other things. So I learned about consistency, clear message, personalized style, values, your niche formula, two types of niche. And this was the first workbook that I used. I also started learning about how to create websites. I, as I told you, I took a course about marketing. I didn't finish it. It was like a master, but I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. All the teachers were men. And there was where I learned that I learned better from women because I want to feel related to someone, I want to feel identified with someone. So of course these men who were talking about SEO and marketing strategies and creating a website and a domain and things that were very technical didn't make me feel inspired to learn from them. And then I started using this Franner journal that my partner gave to me. And here's where I started with the different topics that I could create. So. Uh, here I wrote like auto learning workbook, which is very, very bad written. And I started writing ideas like choose your subject of study and know your why. Search for similar options and take a look at the curriculum. Create your own curriculum area. Talk about my curriculum in healthy pastries, cakes, desserts. Um, then I started organizing the different posts of my first website. Uh, so reorganizing exercise chart and I created a fitness test, how to organize yourself, six tips of personal organization, career. Um, so 
I had plenty of topics here that weren't related to, learn to learning. So with this, I'm trying to tell you that even if you are not sure if the niche you are currently like working on is the best niche for you, I truly want to recommend you to keep on going because as you keep on moving forward, the different paths will be unfolded before your eyes and you will be able to identify if you really want to keep on pursuing this path or if you are into other niche, if you want to create content for other topics, if you want to create something for something completely different to what you are doing or if you want to keep on with the same kind of content but maybe deeper, going deeper into that. I also have something about Ayurveda entrepreneurship, typical day as a blogger, quotes for inspiration, how I organize my monthly budget, why you need to get rid of owning everything. So my topics were all over the place. I talked about minimalism, decluttering, budgeting, um, inspiring quotes. So creating a career. So I had everything, but I was sure that I wanted to create content online i was sure i wanted to create a business online where i could inspire people somehow and help them do something that i could do so i knew what my purpose was my purpose was creating things creating worksheets creating articles creating something to sell online and i was inspired because of that so everything i liked i started creating I also thought about being a decluttering consultant. I also thought about being a writer for other people, like a ghost writer. I had many different ideas for businesses that I wanted to pursue. But of course, I ended up with the language learning one. So here on my Pinterest chart, you can see how my Pinterest grew from nothing so I started my Pinterest or more or less on June 2018 and I had uh, 64 impressions like average impressions a day on Pinterest on June the 5th 2018 and then uh, an 11 like people watching my things and then when I finished tracking this on July 22 um, I reached 8,198 8, impressions a day. And now we're going to move to the next notebook. And it's this one. I bought it somewhere where they were selling like Asian things. And I bought this one, which is very pretty. And I had this idea for posts, but I marked something which was a course I was taking called Stand Out for Success. So I started writing everything and making my plan to differentiate myself. But as you can see here, um, I was already planning things for the girls group for solopreneurs. I wanted to create something to help other women be entrepreneurs. Of course, I wasn't even an entrepreneur myself, or I think at this point I already started creating things to sell online, but they weren't like, it wasn't like a, a real business at that point. But I wanted to create something like, uh, and these are just tentative names, Girls Group for Solopreneur, The Lonely Solopreneur Group, Girl Bosses Club, Girl Bosses Collective, Girl Solopreneur Collective, Female on Solopreneur Collective, The Blissful Organized Girl Collective, The Blissful Girl Collective. At the end, I named this the um, Girl Boss Collective, something like that, but I never launched it. So it was something that I created, but I never launched. And of course, this was after I started creating things for Blizzard Girls. So I tried to organize these notebooks a little bit, but Sometimes I wrote things in one notebook and then I used another one, so they are not exactly the same. But then I have like mail planning for memberships and then big changes that I wanted to make. So changing the secret place to be the Blissover Blissover community. 
this will be a bonus for all of my customers that purchase my product of five dollars or more so very cheap products as you can see and then i started like creating graphics i always draw my graphics here before or in other notebooks um not right away as a digital thing so that's something i also encourage you to do if you want to create something digital don't start right away on your computer on your cell phone or on your laptop make a small outline on a notebook um, plan what you're going to create make an index for example or draw all the different pages so that you are more organized with this and you're going to see how i did it with my first products so i here i started also planning the different worksheets and things i was going to create for my membership for the uh, polyglot girls collective which i did launch i when i launched this membership the day before i launched it i wrote my fears and then i wrote like a an, an answer to this fear trying to make myself feel safer to launch this membership so my first fear was i'm scared that people ask for refunds and don't keep on the membership program and then i wrote myself people will ask for refunds but not all of them this means that only the right people will continue with me and that's okay and in fact um it happened to me that a couple of people asked me for refunds they said i i don't remember if, if it was only for this membership or if it was in relation to another course but i remember people telling me like i don't find value in this course or in this membership uh, i want my money refunded uh, my money refund and at that point it made me feel very bad because of course you're you're kind of preparing yourself mentally to receive this kind of answers from people but sometimes you are not truly prepared for that like you think it can happen someday but in the moment that happens like the first time someone asks you for a refund you feel so bad because you know you put the effort you know you you did everything the best you could to create a, a, a good product for your audience enough a useful product and that someone tells you like i don't find value in this please refund my money or i don't like what you created of course it makes you feel bad but somehow now i feel more prepared for those kind of um um requests refund requests but at that point it was very hard for me and another fear i wrote was i'm scared i get bored creating content for the membership and i find myself with no more ideas and in fact this was a very crazy fear i had because i'm full of ideas always i always have ideas for everything like i never run out of ideas and the final fear i wrote was i'm scared i'll fail and less than five people or even just one will subscribe i'm scared that no one will and <laughs> this is a fear i always have when i launch something but at this point i was afraid no one will join my membership and in fact three people joined my membership after i launched like in the first day of launching and two of them um, joined with a monthly subscription and one person joined with the yearly subscription so sh this girl paid $70 $70 right away for a whole year of subscription in my membership because she wanted to support me or she trusted on me and at that point I was creating like not very good content but the fun thing or the cool thing is that after some months i started creating better and better and better content and this girl had access to all of those things so in this one this should have come before maybe but in this notebook i started planning my notebook my the practical workbook to learn any language so this started with this page called uh, Libro de, Apren de Aprender I didn't even write it fine on Spanish so instead of Aprender I wrote Aprende Libro de Aprender Cualquier Idioma so this is the start I started designing my practical workbook 
this way in this big notebook so I wrote like every every single thing you're going to see that right now I don't know why I'm showing you if you're going to see it in, in the video but <laughs> I started writing like the fonts like which were the fonts I was going to use the, the size of the letter and then I started planning every single page every single page of the workbook so if the workbook had like 60 no it had even more but let's say it had like 70 different pages designs I draw every single page of the notebook even if it had only one sentence and in the title and then blank space I used a whole page to plan that so what I wanted to show you is that creating something takes time creating something takes effort and if you're planning on creating something for your business a digital product grab a, a notebook grab a journal and start planning there so don't think like you have to start right away in Canva or in Photoshop or recording a video right away when you don't even you don't even know what to say that happened to me uh, sometimes that I record things and I didn't even plan what I was what I was going to say I also have this like number pages so I I wanted to organize everything in my notebook before organizing it on Canva. So then I started planning the um, a planner I wanted to create of different colors. Then I created a profitability checklist, organization journal. So I created my first products using this notebook. I think this should have come before I don't know so in this notebook I started organizing my marketing ideas marketing ideas and for example I wrote like the names of my Etsy shop or of the different products I had so language workbook bully school organization planner studies this organization planner entrepreneur this organization planner language lover 365 days uh, journal prom self-care blissful planner those were my first products and then I thought about making a skincare line with a cream a base a soap a corrector makeup remover illuminating I don't know why I had that idea of creating like skincare for people with acne maybe one day I will do it I don't know and then I started writing my marketing ideas for October of that year. I don't know what year was this, maybe 2018. But I started writing like my plans. And then I started creating another workbook, which was to find your perfect career. I think no one bought this. I ended up giving it as gifts for other people. But it took me some time to plan each page and then research each career for each different area of choice and at the end I didn't even make a single penny for this <laughs> for this thing I even designed it here so this is also another lesson you need to learn beforehand some of the things you will create maybe there's the possibility that no one will purchase and the possibility that no one purchases it's not zero percent but it's also not 100 percent. so you always have to be open to the possibility that someone can buy or no one can buy but the thing here is that you need to understand that even if no one purchased something from you even if you created a product and no one bought it you have two options one uh, feeling like a failure which was something I did sometimes feeling like a failure deleting the product not talking more about the product or you can do option number two which is 
doing something with what you created. So maybe you can decrease the price and see if people bought it, buy this product um, in a cheaper price. In that case, you will make sales, which is totally amazing, <laughs> which is the purpose of creating a product sometimes. If you don't want to decrease the price, um, maybe you can give it as a bonus for people. Like in a course, you can put it as a bonus and you don't need to say no one bought this bonus that I'm giving you for free. You don't have to say that, just put it as a bonus and people will think this can be this could have been purchased but I'm getting it as a bonus for this another course um, there are plenty of options you can tweak the design maybe change some things and maybe do a launching campaign whatever you prefer but the thing is that don't feel like it's awful and you're never going to and it was a waste of time sometimes maybe the reason of creating that product was helping you design other products in this um, journal I started planning the passive income things I wanted to create and I started planning for Christmas like Christmas plan for customers and I created a Christmas kits and a coupon code and then I started a challenge also but I also designed a binder with each page so this is like a organization of every page in my binder so I wanted to upgrade prices for example so ebook tips languages from $10 to $13 <laughs> so this is like it was in between of the other ones and now with the final two this one is so big i cannot even show it to you so much but in this notebook i started planning my master classes for the membership uh, the polyglot girls collective i really enjoyed creating content for that membership so design your personalized language curriculum general script master class i had like my general script and then I had the printable that I was going to design for that kit and then the quotes because I made like wallpapers with, with quotes in different languages and then the different graphics to promote it and I was doing this for every single kit for the March kit, the April kit, the May kit every kit has had its own like theme, its own products inside and then I made a plan of 2020 and I made this while on pandemic. So while I was on quarantine, I created this 2020 year plan from May on. And I wanted to create affiliate links for my customers so that they could promote my printables and earn a small commission. Not so small, but a commission uh, thanks to promoting my products. That never worked. <laughs> I need to say that because um, I promoted it on Instagram and I said this is only for my customers but my customers never never applied to be one of my affiliates and one girl contacted me and said I haven't bought your products but I want to be an affiliate and I said okay that's fine I can make an exception for you and I made an exception and then she asked me well can you give me some discount for my followers and I was like, the product is already already has a big discount. I think she promoted my affiliate link once. And then another person I think also subscribed to my affiliate, but uh, no one made any sales because I think this is something people don't understand sometimes. When you have an affiliate link from a product of another person, um, you need to make the work of promoting the product you don't you cannot pro promote once and then expect people to click and buy right away the launch new version polyglot girls collective which was my, which is my course the language study organization bootcamp and then i created a, a quiz i also loved creating quizzes and then for every single thing i would create 
I would make like drawings, for example, in this case, these are my plans for Instagram posts that I would draw the post I wanted to create and then I would go to Canva and try to emulate what I draw in my notebook. And emails, last week's sales, and then promoted uh, audios, the audios for my new course. So in this notebook I ended up planning many things. I also think I planned things for the Ikigai concept and the language learning advent calendar. This was for the first language learning advent calendar I created. I planned on giving different things for my audience during those days. So this was all for this journal uh, notebook. So I had ideas for Blizzard Girl in a worksheet I did that uh, to have a balanced language practice then study language tips background of one of my printables I think I did that I don't know where but I put done then add this in language study organization bootcamp sales page new things coming soon to the course I did it put banner of course on every language learning post done write long posts about my past experience learning languages done and my current experience and then create Instagram of the podcast, of this podcast, of the podcast of the creative purpose. I also did it. And then more things that I did and also some others that I never did. And then my organization for my workbook. So the workbook, can you see it? I know that no one would understand this, but me. <laughs> because it's very, very unorganized. It's like organized, but a mess at the same time. And this one was what I created to create my ebook, the uh, ebook with 144 activities, uh, the interactive ebook of language learning. So as you can see, here's more organization of that ebook because you had to click on a link on a bottom and it would take you to a certain page and if you click on that page it would take you to another page so it was a lot of organization calculating the pages uh, i think it was kind of a math work mathematical work and i'm very bad at maths that i was really having a lot of trouble with that and then i kept on this uh, seeing like Etsy things, Etsy red flags. I tried to learn about Etsy a lot because I wasn't getting enough traffic. I wasn't selling enough products. My products de decreased a lot from a moment on. So I wanted to learn what was going wrong. And then I created an email challenge and then yearly events 2021, 2022. I don't know why I wrote 2022, but I did it. <laughs> so for January, relax, create fun text. And I did it. Then for February, International Mother Tongue Day. I did a special where I sold some things and gave some bonuses away. Then on March, course marketing or hub marketing. Then on April, focus on posting on Instagram. I, that month, I focused a, long, a lot on Instagram. Then in May, relax, do live sessions or a masterclass and prepare the language delight challenge. That was one of the last challenges I made. Then on June, the language delight 30 day challenge. Um, some people joined, but only two people shared that they joined on Instagram. So I really never knew if people actually learned something in that challenge. Then on July, I made a mini course. On August, I uh, changed the shop area on my website. I also did it. Then on September, focus on posting on Instagram again. And then on October, relax, improve half and work on advent calendar. And then on November, the Black Friday sale and in December, the Christmas advent calendar. So I always planned in advance, like I started planning this since the beginning of the year. Almost everything I created for my first business, I planned it ahead with months in advance. There were some occasions where I had an idea and I did it right away, or I had an idea and I did it like in the following week. But most of the time I planned my things with a lot of time ahead. So when they didn't work after months of planning, months of creating, it really felt bad, but some things did work. Some things were really, really um, 
I created it and then I received amazing feedback. Um, people bought it, people joined. So you have to test things. And then I created a coffee page, like a Patreon but coffee page. And it was a mess, no one joined. <laughs> And then the customer hub, I made it better. I improved the customer hub, and then I saw the language learning delight ebook. I wanted to write an ebook, now I remember about it. I never did it. I never did this. I wanted to write an ebook about called language learning delight, but I never did that. That's so sad, I was so excited to do that. And then I have this blueprint help what works, what doesn't. So I wrote a list of all my projects and then how they turned out. Like all my projects and if they worked or they didn't. Everything with an X didn't work. <laughs> Everything with this sign worked. And with it, when it's mixed, it worked, but not so much. So for example, uh, the 30 day language delight challenge worked because people got interested, two girls shared some updates of the challenge and my sales increased that month. The tarot card reading on my Instagram didn't work because people were not engaged. And then the mini course with three lessons, some people subscribed, but no one talked about it. And I made no sales in the course that I was promoting. So you need to do that when you create this, like write down something worked, why? Why didn't work? What you can learn from that experience. I hope you could enjoy today's video. I hope you could get some interesting insights inside of the different notebooks I shared with you. And I truly really hope that this could inspire you to use your own notebooks, your own notebooks to create your projects, even if it's a video for YouTube, if it's a podcast, if it's a digital product, if it's a song, whatever your creative projects are, whatever your ideas for your business, your small business is, I truly want to inspire you and motivate you and encourage you to start planning in a notebook before you start creating your things. So I hope you have enjoyed this video a lot and I see you in the next one. Bye!